Now Luna just told me that videos make up 82% of all consumer internet usage. And YouTube is the world's second largest search engine with higher search volume than AOL, Yahoo and Microsoft Bing combined. You could make the argument that if the early internet rewarded businesses that could write and share information through text, the future will likely reward businesses that get to grips with video. So here's a question for you. If video is undoubtedly the future of digital marketing, how's your video marketing going? And why do so few businesses use video well? Well, I've grown every business that I've run since 2008 using video. And here at Exposure Ninja, we've been testing video marketing for eight years. And while we still have a lot to learn, it has become one of our most important marketing channels. And today I'm gonna to break down everything that we've learned about using video marketing to generate leads and sales for your business. She's ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. Now there are four basic ways to use video to generate more leads and sales. Firstly, improving conversions from your existing website traffic by using videos on your site. Secondly, generating new traffic to your site through YouTube and Google. Thirdly, by using video in your social content to boost your social following. And fourthly, by building personal brand and using vlogging to build credibility around you or someone in the business to drive traffic to your website. Today we're gonna to focus on the first two, using video on your website to improve conversions and driving traffic from YouTube and Google seeing as these are, in our experience, the most reliable and fastest ways to generate ROI. Now, that's not to say that the other two don't work, they obviously do, but we've found that using video on your website to improve conversions and driving traffic through YouTube and Google is much more predictable and generally happens much quicker. So we're gonna show you loads of examples from different businesses that are doing this stuff well, and then at the end, I'm gonna give you my tips based on the experience and the very hard and costly lessons that we've learned along the way. All right, so the first way to drive more conversions through your website using video is to use video to do demonstrations. There's a few different implementations of this based on whether you're selling software, B2B or B2C. So let's look at some examples. The first example is HubSpot, which is obviously a software company selling CRM. Notice how HubSpot uses videos on their product pages to demonstrate the software. Not only does this help convert visitors because they can see what they'd actually get if they were to book a demo, but it also means that HubSpot sales team saves time explaining basic features to their potential customers because they've already had a chance to look at the videos on the site. Now these videos are pretty straightforward. They're just screenshots of HubSpot's products with a few little descriptions about what you can see and the different features and benefits of using HubSpot. In my opinion, this sort of thing should be standard issue for any SaaS business because unless people can see what the thing looks like and how it works, the likelihood of them requesting a demo is fairly small given that that is a high risk, time intensive thing for them to do. Video demonstrations are also widely used in the most successful e-commerce stores. Here you can see ASOS is using a range of product photos but they also use a product video to show you how this is worn. With average e-commerce return rates, hovering anywhere from 20 to 30%, sometimes even higher for fashion brands, anything an e-commerce store can do to reduce that return rate, i.e. by showing customers exactly what this product looks like, is going to increase their margin significantly. In this example, notice how private healthcare firm Booper uses video on their service pages. So here we're on the facial aesthetics page, and it's a fairly boring clinical looking page given that the call to action is basically contact us so that we can stab things into your face. So what they've done to sort of soften things, de-risk it a bit and build a bit of personal relationship is to include this video where one of their dentists talks through some of the processes and answers questions that potential patients might have. The next way that you can use video on your site to increase conversions is through using video testimonials. Now we all know that written testimonials could technically be faked. Now with consumers being more wary than ever about the validity of text testimonials, Video testimonials are a great way of building credibility in a believable way. If you've been watching Exposure Ninja videos for a while, you'll know that my dirty secret digital marketing crush is National Accident Helpline. They're a lead gen firm for personal injury accident claims, so not necessarily the most reputable business sector in the whole world. Anyway, notice how on their pages they have these great customer stories videos. These customer stories are great. They are ordinary people talking about their experience with National Accident Helpline and how great it's been. It removes objections, it removes some of the ick that people might feel about submitting a personal injury claim, and it does a great job of building National Accident Helpline's credibility. Another company that does a great job of getting customer testimonials on video is Smile Direct Club. They're a clear aligner service like Invisalign, and they have these great Smile Direct Club stories where they get their customers to talk about the impact that Smile Direct Club has had on their lives. Now these videos are all pretty short, which means they can cut them up, they can use them as pre-roll ads on YouTube, they can use them on their website, they can send them out to their customers via email. They're really versatile pieces of marketing. And of course, having this sort of customer story allows you 
to sell without feeling salesy. Because as everyone knows, it's not bragging when your customers say it. For a B2B example, notice how Salesforce here uses their relationship with some really large brands like 3M. They've got these videos talking about the partnership they have with these brands and why these brands choose Salesforce. Now, whilst they're not the most entertaining videos in the world, what they do is build a credibility for Salesforce because these large companies are willing to stand up and be used in Salesforce's marketing, which demonstrates they have a really good relationship. And of course, you can use this in your marketing emails, you can use this on your website, and you can use this sort of stuff in YouTube ads too. The next way to use videos to improve your conversion rate on your website is in your blog posts and your long form content. Let's say that you have a long form piece of content on your site like this one here, how to define your target audience in six quick questions. Now they might be quick questions, but this is a long post and keeping people's attention through a long piece of content like this is not always easy. So what you can do and what we found works really well is adding a video version of this post at the top. This means that if people are more interested in the video way of consuming their information, they can get this, which is gonna increase their stick rate on this page. You can also embed video throughout a longer piece of content too. And you'll see that we often add different types of media throughout a post. Like here, we've got some embedded podcasts. We might add some embedded videos or embedded tweets. It breaks things up a little bit and keeps people's engagement as they go down the page. This is really important if you're gonna be ranking these posts on Google because Google wants to see that people are clicking on your posts and they are staying on those posts for a decent amount of time. Isn't that right, Luna? Yeah! So that's using video to improve your conversions. Now let's talk about using video to drive more traffic to your site. And the first way of doing this obviously is YouTube. YouTube can be an incredible source of traffic for your business and it's got 2.1 billion monthly users. All you need is one or 2% of that. Now generally it's easier to rank videos on YouTube than it is to rank pages on Google because there is much less competition. Think about it, every page ever created is basically indexable to Google. But to rank on YouTube, you've got to go to the time and effort of putting together a YouTube video and uploading it on YouTube, which most people don't do. And of the ones that do, very few of them are able to make a good video. And of the ones that can, very few of them are able to optimize that video to show up for search. I just spy us an opportunity, Captain Loon. Now there's two ways of getting traffic from YouTube. The first is to target search. For example, you can see here I've typed in best CRM and we've got a whole bunch of videos targeting these phrases. These videos have been designed with this phrase in mind. They use it in the title, they'll use it in the description, and they'll use it in the script of their videos. If you're an architecture interiors design firm, for example, you might target a phrase like home design ideas, or like Ikea are doing here, you could work with influencers that are already ranking for these sorts of topics. Now, whether you're B2B, B2C, whatever you sell, the strategy here is basically just content marketing and SEO. It's keyword research to identify what people are searching for. It's coming up with titles which match that intent. And then it's making videos which include your keywords in the title, in the description, and in the copy, i.e. the script that you're working from. But the other way to get views on video is through browse targeting. Now, whilst YouTube gets a lot of search volume, YouTube also gets a lot of people that just open the homepage and decide what to watch, a bit like on Netflix. And then of course, when they click on a video, then they see all these related videos down the side. Now to win this game, you need to get good at browse targeting. Let's look at how three companies are doing this well. Case study number one, Glossier. Glossier is a makeup brand. They've got 150K subs on YouTube, which is pretty good. And you can see that they're working with influencers that people might know, folk like Olivia Rodrigo. They also have a series of get ready with me videos where they're working with influencers that have reach already on YouTube. So let's say that you're watching a Rachel Lindsay video. You might then see this in your suggested video and go, ah, that looks interesting. Click it and then Glossier has nine minutes and seven seconds to embed their subliminal marketing techniques into your brain. They also have some great search focused tutorial content like these ones here, where they teach you how to do particular makeup looks. Now Shopify by contrast is even more browse focused. Look at these thumbnails. This is prime YouTube influencer. <gasps> The product that Gen Z's will want in five years. Sell this to Gen Z's in 2022. Five business ideas for the future. These are attention grabbing thumbnails and titles designed to appeal to people who didn't come on YouTube to watch Shopify content, but who Shopify thinks could be good potential customers, i.e. people that are thinking about starting a business. If you're gonna be doing this, you need to think about what matters most to your audience. What are their goals and how can you present this in an exciting and curiosity inducing way? Now for a bit more, calm, polished, and dare I say, professional approach, have a look at Volvo. Well, that makes things easier. Um, on Volvo's page, we can see a variety of different strategies that they're using here. From making search focused videos, targeting the sort of things that people might be searching if they're thinking about buying an electric car, to sharing videos about some of Volvo's key values, 
Now, they could have optimized these better. They're not particularly descriptive titles, but these are the sorts of videos that would be great to go out as part of an email indoctrination sequence as you're going through the process of helping someone understand what's important to your business. And there are also product-focused videos here, which have clearly been used for ads because they're all around the one minute mark. So you can see a range of different ways that people are using YouTube to drive traffic to their website. But there's one more, and you don't even have to produce the videos yourself, and that is using YouTube influencers. There are loads of videos posted by YouTube influencers about Smile Direct Club. But if you're a direct consumer, this can be a great way of driving traffic. Now, this isn't gonna work for every business because a lot of these people are posting this knowing that Smile Direct Club review is a popular keyword. So they're actually using Smile Direct Club to get more viewers to their channel. But actually one of the things that Smile Direct Club does really well is their affiliate program gives customers affiliate links which they can use. So for example, here we have Amber's Smile Direct Club affiliate link, which means that she will get a commission every time somebody purchases through the link. Super cool. Okay, so what about using video to drive traffic through Google? Well, according to SE ranking, up to 30% of mobile Google searches now include videos in the SERPs. And with us all having 4G or 5G and people's data plans not being so restricted, we are much more willing to click on videos on mobile to find the information that we need. So you can see for this particular search, how to write page titles and meta descriptions, uh, we are ranking here but we also have the top video in this video pack as well. Well, how did we get this? Well, we got this by optimizing this video for that target keyword and also by embedding this video on the blog post with that name. And we found that this can be a really good approach. So you write a blog post about a particular topic targeting that keyword, and then you make a video targeting the same keyword using the same keyword in your title, in the video description and making sure that you use those phrases in your video copy as well, i.e. the script. And that can be a great way of getting your videos ranking for these sorts of informational terms that can imply someone could be a potential customer for you. By the way, are you actually enjoying this? Oh, I'm so glad. If you want some more free help with your digital marketing, then check out this service from Exposure Ninja. It's called the Free Website and Digital Marketing Review. All you need to do is go to ExposureNinja.com and fill in a short questionnaire about your business and your digital marketing. One of our team will then analyze what you're doing well what you could be doing even better and what your competitors are doing really well that you can copy or exploit or whatever uh, to generate more leads and sales through your site. They'll turn all of this into a video which they'll send over to you usually within two to three working days and the whole service is completely free of charge. So go to ExposureNinja.com. Now sometimes we decide that actually the review isn't going to be the most useful thing for you depending on where your business is at. If that's the case then we will send you some free goodies instead but don't worry these aren't just free rubbish goodies these are really useful things like free courses and free training that everyone else has to pay for. So go to ExposureNinja.com to request your free website and digital marketing review today. All right, Tim, sweet. So those are the strategies, but how do we actually make video marketing work for our business? Because video sounds messy and hard. Yes, it is. Let me show you some tips based on our experience doing video marketing over the last eight years. Now, the first one is to decide whether you're going to do this in-house or whether you're going to outsource. And my recommendation here might be a bit surprising. Now, you might be tempted to think, well, we don't really have any experience with video, so we're going to outsource this. We're going to get a video production company to come and do our videos. And that can make a lot of sense if you're having a promotional video made, for example. But actually, for many businesses that want to make video marketing an ongoing part of their mix, having to rely on an outside firm can actually work against them. You see, for Exposure Ninja, I have all the video gear and the lights set up the whole time in this office. That means if I've got a few hours spare, I can bosh out a video. If I had to call a firm and arrange a time, or worse still, travel out to a studio each time we wanted to make a video, we would get no videos done, and that would mean that we would get no traction. Video marketing is a numbers game. You have to be churning out stuff consistently if you're gonna get results. So my advice is that if this is gonna be something that you do regularly and you want to build up a cadence of videos that you're producing, it's worth investing some time and energy in getting things set up and building your own processes for publishing video, as painful as that might seem. Now, my next tip is to become a student of YouTube. Even if your business is the most bland, B2B, boring thing, potentially like Exposure Ninja, we're talking about digital marketing, right? A lot of people think that's really boring. Obviously I don't and you don't, but other people out there, they think that this stuff is boring. <laughs> what you don't want to do with your video marketing is look at your competitors and copy them because the majority of the time your competitor's video marketing is going to be rubbish. If you're gonna model yourself on anything, you want to model yourself on the videos that are getting the most engagement possible. Understanding things like video pacing, the entertainment value, topic selection, thumbnail design. Your competitors won't have a clue about this stuff, so don't copy them, 
go and study Mr. Beast. Him and his team have figured this stuff out better than anyone in history. For example, one of the things I've learned about video marketing has surprised me a lot, and that is what's the most important thing about any video that you produce? Is it the information that you get across? Is it building a relationship and rapport with the audience? Is it making your videos humorous? Is it presentation style? No, it's none of these. It's making sure your videos are entertaining. Entertainment is the most important thing in any video that you produce. Why? Because if you don't hold someone's attention long enough, you're not going to be able to get any of the other stuff across to them anyway. Now don't worry, entertainment doesn't have to mean exaggerated hand gestures or video voices, giving away prizes and smashing stuff up with a baseball bat. Being entertaining can be as simple as adding stories or sharing examples in your video to break up the flow of information. And another thing to say on being a student of YouTube is that the format of your videos will likely change over time. You might start off by doing a weekly vlog about your business to show people what it looks like behind the scenes and you're hoping that people will Will build a connection with the people in your company and get really excited about that. And then after a few months of getting hardly any views and seeing no growth, you might decide actually we need to change track here and we need to target things that people are searching for or we need to target things that people are browsing. But that's totally okay. You don't need to come up with the perfect plan immediately. Just accept that as you learn and as you try more things, you're going to iterate your videos and that's completely fine. My next piece of advice is decide to commit. Now, how do I phrase this? Video marketing can feel like a total slog and like a thankless waste of time for at least a year. Now this is partly because when you start making videos, you will be rubbish, everybody is. <laughs> but this is partly also because it takes a while to build momentum. Now I would suggest committing to make a certain number of videos and being totally okay with them getting 50 views. After all, I've seen people travel a full day to give a seminar presentation to 25 people and not get paid for it. Oh, and by people, I mean me. Now at that point, at that time, it felt like a good use of time because I could see the 25 people. And yet when we publish something on YouTube, if we only get 50, 100, 200 views, we feel like a failure. It's easy to forget that that is 200 people or bots. That is 200 people watching your video. Imagine a room of 200 people all sat there watching your video. That's a pretty good result. Of course, this is even more true if you're selling a high ticket item. Going back to those Salesforce videos where they're talking about how they've worked with 3M during the pandemic. Well, that might have only had 12,000 views, but if you think about the average order value of each Salesforce customer, that is a very high potential value amount of attention. Now, if you're going to be making videos targeting either YouTube search or Google search, the first thing that you're going to need to do is keyword research. This video is going to show you a start to finish process that you can use for keyword research, which will help you find the keywords that are going to be most valuable to your business to make content for. The last thing you want to do is spend all that time planning and recording and publishing a video only to find that the phrases it's targeting aren't high enough search volume to get you any traffic. Well, this video will prevent you from making that mistake.